We're so glad you've joined us because today we'll be creating these fun Andy Warhol loosely inspired Sphinx cats in acrylic. And it's actually pretty easy to create. So let's get into it. If you'd like to have a go at this project, we'll be using a 60 by 90 centimeter canvas, a 6B pencil, a roll of tape, masking tape preferably, a large ruler, a tear off paper palette, a palette knife, some brushes, a 75 millimeter sponge roller, some titanium white acrylic color and crimson acrylic color and a satin series intro set. You can find this materials list along with the lesson plan and these cute outline reference images on our website. First, we need to divide the canvas up into four equal size rectangles using the ruler and that pencil. Next, print out the reference images to A3 and we can draw up the first Sphinx cat by shading the back side of the sheet, flipping it over, taping it in position and retracing the line work. Once this is done, we have to redraw in that line work so it stands out more as we will be painting colour over the top of this and it needs to be visible beneath the coat. Follow these steps for the second, third and fourth cat. This is the most tedious part of the project but it's not difficult if you keep referring to the original printout as you draw up each cat. Once that's out the way, we can add paint to the cat. For the first one, we create a turquoise colour from phthalo blue, titanium white and a little bit of medium green. Mix it thoroughly with the palette knife on the tear off paper palette and then load up the damp sponge roller and apply it over the first cap. If you cannot see the line work, add more water to the mix. A roller is best to apply the paint as the coat is translucent and it goes on very consistently. While this is drying, tear the sheet off the palette, wash up the roller and create a sky blue from titanium white and a touch of phthalo blue. Apply this with the damp roller. The third cat is painted in with a light purple created from titanium white and a touch of violet. The fourth cat is painted in with a yellow green mixed from lemon yellow with a touch of medium green. Allow this to dry. Next, we need to put the background colors on and repaint in the outline. The first background color around the turquoise cat is orange, but for orange to be vibrant, we need to first paint the background area white. Although most warm colors are relatively opaque, it is the addition of white in the formulation which makes them fully opaque. So a clean color with no white in the formulation, any dark underlying colors can still be seen to an extent. So this white underlayer is really optional. But I think the clean orange against that turquoise really makes the colors pop and strong complementary colors were a large part of Warhol's work. Acrylic paint dries quite quickly, so try to get it on as smoothly and as quickly as you can. Use the widest flat brush for this. The next step is to paint in the line work on the first cat. This is an exercise in brush control. So the paint flows nicely, mix down the black paint with some water so it has the viscosity of pouring cream and use a fine liner brush to apply the line work. You'll find when you get the hang of it, it's quite relaxing. It's possible to vary the line weight greatly with this brush too. The only rule to follow is to try and finish the stroke so that the line tapers to nothing. 
The next background colour is yellow. So again, for it to be really vibrant, the blue will need to be painted in first with white. And then once dry, the yellow can be applied. Yellow is blue's complementary colour, so they really make one another pop. It seems strange now, but yellow is a relatively new pigment to the art world, as the colour was not discovered until 1770 by Swedish chemist Carl Wilhelm Scheel. The yellow pigment was made by grinding together two parts of lead and one part of sea salt into water. The mixture was allowed to stand for 24 hours before a caustic solution was poured off and the remaining white substance was heated and dried until it reached the desired shade of yellow. Nowadays, however, the pigment in yellow is safe and environmentally friendly. The outline can then be drawn over the second cat. Obviously, the line work takes a little more concentration, so it's good to break it up and finish one block, and then move on to the next. As I said, these are Sphinx cats, and because they have no fur, you can see all of the creases in their skin, and they make for pretty interesting subjects to draw and paint. The third panel has a vermilion background, and this colour can be created by mixing scarlet and orange. This colour will cover that light purple well, so no white underpainting is required. Acrylic is the perfect paint for a project like this. Warhol and the other pop artists were the first artists who favoured acrylic paint for fine art. Acrylic paint was developed in 1930 and was first used commercially as paint for machinery and house paint and gained popularity as it was affordable, dried so quickly and was not as toxic as some of the other paints at the time. Many classically trained artists at the time did not care for it due to the difficulties in blending and creating tonal transitions but it was perfect for the pop artists who painted with blocks of colour laid over one another. The last background colour is crimson. This cannot be mixed from the intro set, so we use straight colour from a tube of crimson acrylic colour and lay this in. Crimson is a very ancient colour and was originally made from scaled insects called kermes, which were gathered commercially in Mediterranean countries. The pigment used for crimson is now synthetic. Once the black line work is done on the fourth cat, we can paint all the eyes in with a white to provide a nice white point for the subsequent coat. You might like to leave it at this stage as they look pretty cool, like zombie cats. If you do wish to add some colour into the eyes, then we have used light purple on the first cat, turquoise for the second blue cat, yellow on the light purple cat, and our last yellow green cat has orange eyes. The last step is to put in the slits for the eyes And voila! Well, we hope you've enjoyed this fun little lesson. Maybe you'd like to paint your own pet in this style. While you're here, don't forget to take a look around the Create section on our website and uncover a whole heap of free stuff. From free projects, handy tips and tricks and techniques to keep you busy. Otherwise, have fun, keep creating and we'll see you in the next one.